So everyone, Apple just released both iOS and iPadOS 16.4 Beta 2 to all developers to test out and see if there's any A, new features, and B, any bug improvements and stability improvements overall to make sure that we're ready to go for a public release probably four to six weeks from now. So in this video, what I wanna do is mention what's new with iOS 16.4 Beta 2, as well as iPadOS, and kinda of talk about Stage Manager a little bit, also secondary monitor support, and see if it's gotten even more stable since 16.2 when it finally released to the entire public. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, everyone, let's get right into this video. And I do wanna mention that I am using a 13 Pro Max in all of this. So the first thing we like to do is go and check out the actual build number and see exactly what we're dealing with. So let's go into our settings, go into general, go into about, and then we'll go into 16.4. So here we have a 20E5223 lowercase e. So it means we're getting closer and closer to the RC edition. The lower that moniker goes at the very end, so the closer we get to C, B, and then A, finally reducing or getting rid of that entire letter, the closer we are to that RC edition and the public release. So this is 16.4 beta 2. And then real quick, if you are in the beta program, whether it is a public beta or the developer beta, make sure you go into your software update over here and make sure that these beta updates are turned on by default, because if not, it's gonna take a little while or a lot longer, because you're gonna have to manually go in and install the beta. So receive beta updates on this iPhone for the test drive pre-release versions of iOS and provide feedback to help make Apple software even better. So make sure this is turned on to the developer beta because by default, it is turned off as of 16.4 beta one. The next thing I like to do is actually look at how big this build number was or this build was. So it's 670 megabytes on the 13 Pro Max, and then if you look on the iPhone or the iPad, I'm sorry, it's actually 530 megabytes overall. So compared to beta one, beta one was almost five gigabytes, if not more. So there is an expectation that this is gonna be a much smaller update overall. So keep that in mind, but give yourself at least one gigabyte of open storage to get this installed and get it installed correctly. Now, in terms of what's new, there isn't too much to speak about in terms of new features, right? Last time we got the new emojis, the new 5G standalone and things like that. But in this one, we did get a couple of new things. The first thing that did pop up is a new splash screen in the podcast app. Now these features did come to beta one and 16.4, but now it's just reiterating it with a splash screen. So it says channels and library, easily access, followed shows and more from your channels, improved up next. So resume episodes and remove what you want to skip. And then also CarPlay updates. So quickly pick up where you left off even using it through CarPlay. So these are the new features that came to Apple Podcasts in beta one. Now they're just reiterating it with this splash screen right here. Another thing that I'm gonna pull up on the screen is that if you have an iPhone 14 Pro or 14 Pro Max, be sure to go and look into your display settings. So go into your settings and go down to where it says display settings. So display and brightness. And then right underneath where it says race to wake, you should have your always on display option. And in here, they did change up the order of what these options and toggles look like. And they also added some additional text. So now it says always on display, dims the lock screen. So it explains to you what the actual always on display means. And then also it says show wallpaper, show notifications, and then turn off and on always on display. So that's always good to know. And now there's a new feature on here that smartly kind of indicates exactly what's going on in terms of always on display and making sure that battery saver is on. So if it kind of realizes that you're not using the display at all, it'll kind of turn off that always on display to save battery overall, which is always a welcome addition. The next new feature is still in the settings. So we go into settings, go into general, go into about, and then go to coverage. You'll be able to see everything that's covered over Apple Care Plus, And also you're able to actually see if it's expired, if it's limited warranty or anything in between. So here you can see that coverage is expired on my 13 Pro Max on my Apple Watch. I have limited warranty on my AirPods Pro and the other AirPods Pro that I have on here are also out of warranty. So if something does happen, then they might not be able to help me. But in my actual experiences, even if you're outside of warranty, as long as that's not like a crazy amount, Apple will help you out. Like I've had AirPods be fully replaced. I've had a Magic Keyboard be fully replaced outside of warranty without Apple Care. So depending on the product, you know, it's a case by case situation. You might not always need to buy Apple Care for, especially for like accessories and little things, but maybe for iPhones and iPads and more hardware and compute power stuff, maybe Apple Care is the way to go. So another new feature that came in that can be accessed in two different ways. So if we go back into our settings and go down to books. So if you have the books app installed, then you should have the books option down here in your actual settings. You have the ability to now change the page turn animation. So if you go down here to where it says page turn animation, you can now actually curl the page instead of slide it, or you can actually get rid of it completely, which is always great. It's always good to have that sort of optionality with this stuff because at the end of the day, it's a preference thing. And I know that Apple used to do this with their iPads way back in the day with their books application. It basically makes it look like an actual turning page. So if I turn on curl, then go into book itself and then go into my Winnie the Pooh book. I can actually now turn it and it looks like I'm curling the page like a real book. So again, nothing that really does anything from a function standpoint, but it looks cooler. It looks a little bit more, you know, native. It looks like it's kind of like a real book. 
so it's always a little welcome addition, and again, all this stuff is coming to both iOS and iPadOS. A couple of other new things to consider, which might not be new, especially if you're US based, because it did come out with the last beta one update. So if you go into your voice and data plan, we did get 5G standalone, which is a new version that works with T-Mobile, which should be able to get you much faster speeds. I personally have not been able to get good speeds with 5G standalone, but that just be could be because of my area. But now this 5G standalone is available in Brazil. So now you have it in the US with T-Mobile and then in Brazil, and I'll name the actual carrier down below because it's only with one carrier. So keep that in mind, I'll put it on the screen. Another thing to consider is that now Apple Pay is now approved and should be starting to be supported all over South Korea, which is something that is awesome to see. So more and more countries are adopting Apple Pay to make it easier to pay for things. No longer do we have to carry a wallet. Like I'm down to only having my ID and maybe one emergency card and then a photo of my wife and my daughter. That's all I carry in my little wallet. So having all these cards and being able to use it all over the world is a great addition. Little by little, we're getting more. And then also we should be getting the high yield savings account as time comes on because Apple still has not released that for us. That's everything with iOS, but now let's quickly move over to iPadOS and see what it's like from a stability standpoint. So again, everything that I mentioned with iOS will come over to iPadOS, so the 5G standalone, if you have a 5G enabled iPad, you know, being able to use the emojis, all of that stuff still is coming to the iPad. But I did just wanna show you how stable it's been because overall the stability of iPadOS has been great. Even if I go into Stage Manager, Click on Stage Manager, everything moves how you would want it to move. So I grab another Safari, I can kind of pull this over. So as long as you know what you're doing and you know exactly what apps you want and you kind of are getting used to it more and more, then things start to open up and they start to open up extremely quickly. They work as intended. Let's say I want to grab Twitter, move it up here. So now I have four applications running side by side. I'm able to resize them pretty easily. I know that the inertia starts to kick in, so it starts to move stuff around on its own, which, you know, it's a hit or miss thing depending on how you like it and what you want to do. But overall, it works great, and Stage Manager has been working great both on the iPad physically as well as in secondary monitor support. And I love being able to use it in secondary monitor because I can still use my iPad as an iPad, but then I can use it on the secondary monitor as a computer, which is great to see. So, so overall, improvements to Stage Manager have been great. And again, Stage Manager is available to all iPad Pros from 2018 and newer, so the 2018, the 2020, and the 2021 and 2022 iPads. And then actual secondary monitor support is supported with only M-powered iPads. So M1 iPad Air, M1 iPad Pro, and M2 iPad Pro. Now keep that in mind. Now let's finish up this video with some battery life updates and then get out of here. Now I quickly wanted to bring up the battery life because I have been using beta one for the last two weeks and obviously beta two for the last 24 hours. And if you go to the last 10 days, you can see that I'm getting about five hours, almost six hours of screen on time and about an hour and a half of screen off time. Now again, I'm using an 18 month old 13 Pro Max and if I go to battery health and charging, I am at 89%, which isn't amazing, but I've never actually taken the time to really help on my battery life overall. Like I'm probably the worst example. This is probably worst case scenario just because brightness is always on. I, I rarely dim the screen. I never go to low power mode. I always have data on. I always have 5G on. There's a bunch of different factors that kind of hurt my actual battery longevity and battery health overall. But you can see that for an 18 month phone, six hours of battery life is not bad. Again, with iOS 15, I was getting about nine to 10 to almost 11 hours of screen on time. iOS 16 kind of hurt that a little bit, but we are improving over time. But let's see on a day like this, where we went still underneath 100% battery, we're doing six and a half hours of screen on time, and almost three hours of screen off time. But that's what we're getting from a battery life perspective. Let's get out of here. So as you saw, there weren't too many tangible features or differences with this beta two update. We saw a bunch of new things come with 16.4 beta one, which is a new emoji update, you know, a 5G standalone and things of that nature to kind of, again, improve your overall experience with iOS 16.4 and ideally improve battery life overall. But from a feature standpoint, we aren't getting too much. It's all mostly bug fixes and improvements. And then also with stage manager and secondary monitor support with M1 powered iPads, it's gotten extremely stable and a lot of people kind of forgot about it after 16.2 because with 16.0, Apple brought it over. Then with 16.1, Apple removed it because it wasn't ready and they brought it back with 16.2 and honestly, it works wonders. So if you're in a situation where you only want to use your iPad and you have an M powered iPad, I think it's a great solution to have if you want to use it as your desktop solution for a computer. Let me know in the comments below if you guys updated to 16.4 beta 2 or even 16.4 overall just to get that new emoji update. Always curious to know and let me know if you guys are finding any new bugs, any new enhancements, any new features that we didn't mention in this video. But if you guys did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys want to watch some more iPadOS, iOS, or macOS videos, click on one of these right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando and I'm out of here everybody. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.